John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com. Today, we're talking about what it means to be normal in terms of lenses. Now, most photographers have a vague sense of what normal lens is from any introductory video. It's a lens with a focal length equal to that of the diagonal of the sensor. Well, that's a standard. That's not the definition. Much like depth of field and the size of the circle of confusion, it's a matter of subjectivity and that it depends on the observer. The more precise definition of a normal lens is a focal length that creates a field of view that appears natural or normal to a human observer. That's from Wikipedia, which we all know is 100% correct on everything. To reframe it, a normal lens is the dividing line between a wide angle lens, which gives us a wider than natural angle of view, and a telephoto lens, which gives us a narrower than natural angle of view. It's right in the middle, the Goldilocks focal length. It doesn't distort the field of view in either direction. But let's home in on that definition. What does a field of view that appears natural to a human observer actually mean? For this discussion, I'm going to ignore the biological component and treat the eye as just a point in space. There's a whole rabbit hole to go down in regards to biology. The focal length of the human eye, the curved retina, and all of that. Look up Helmholtz's 1867 pincushion chessboard. If you stand close enough to that image, the chessboard will actually look square. Okay, but we're not, we're not going there. Instead, we're going to with a basic Euclidean geometry concept of natural viewing angle from a point in space. No funny business. Now, let's borrow a portrait studio cliche. If I hold up an empty picture frame at arm's length, since I am a human observer, last time I checked, a normal lens would generate a field of view of the image that I would see through this picture frame. In other words, whatever I see through this empty picture frame is a normal perspective. Therefore, a normal lens is a lens that will give me the exact angle of view as what's pictured in that empty frame. Now, you might be asking, well, doesn't the distance and the size of the frame matter? Yes, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's diagram this out. From a top-down perspective, my head is the bottom point and the edges of the picture frame represent the edges of my angle of view. We could use basic trigonometry to find this angle of view. I get into the math of field of view extensively in my forced perspective video card in the corner, wherever, which one or that one. But we can actually get away with some basic, simple geometry. If we want to figure out the focal length needed to achieve this angle of view, all we have to do is extend the lines of the angle of view through the bottom point and create a similar triangle with a base equal to the dimension of our sensor. Now, because these are similar triangles, we know that the ratio of the height and the width of both of these triangles are going to be the same. So the ratio of the distance to the frame and the dimension of the frame is equal to the ratio between the focal length and the dimension of the sensor. Now let's move this from a two-dimensional top-down view to three dimensions. The images we create in a camera are almost always some form of rectangle, but lenses create an image circle. And in order to cover a rectangle with a circle, you need a circle's diameter to extend the longest line in the rectangle, and that's the diagonal of the rectangle. So that's where we get this definition of a normal lens being equal to the diagonal. If you've dived into my exposure video, card in the corner, uh, this is starting to look a lot like a steradian, which is a common SI unit used to describe lumens. I only bring this up to show that there is precedent in using diagonals in terms of light and photography. Now, let's get back to the question of frame size and viewing distance. Yes, the size of the viewing image and the distance determine what focal length will be considered normal. Let's start with a common standard, the focal length equal to the diagonal of the sensor. How big an image and how close do we have to sit in order to make that definition actually create a normal perspective? Well, luckily we can just reverse the similar triangles. If the focal length is equal to the diagonal of the sensor, then the viewing distance is equal to the diagonal of the final image. For viewing an eight by 10 printed image, the viewing distance would need to be about 12.8 inches from your face to get a normal angle of view. So somewhere right about here. If I were viewing an image on my phone, it would need to be about 6.7 inches away from my face, so even closer like that. 
But we don't always view images from these exact distances. In fact, we rarely ever do, especially when it comes to motion pictures. So that definition of a normal lens being a diagonal of the sensor really isn't right. So let's switch gears and instead of talking about diagonals and distance, let's talk about field of view in terms of degrees. Using some trigonometry, we can determine that the focal length equal to the diagonal gives us a field of view of 53.1 degrees. Now, most people do not watch movies filling up 53.1 degrees of their sightline. You can, but it's not common. Now, there are three industry standards for viewing angle I was able to find for motion picture viewing. These aren't exact, but they're rough guidelines. There is a 20 degree standard, which is cited by television manufacturers going back many, many years. Now, for movie and home theater setups, there are two often quoted standards, SEMTI, which recommends the ideal viewing angle about 30 degrees, and THX, which puts the ideal viewing angle about 40 degrees. They also have maximum and minimum standards, with only the extreme THX minimum distance for theater viewing reaching the diagonal, the sensor standard of 53.1 degrees. That's like sitting in the front of the theater. Let's translate that into lenses. With a viewing distance that gives us 20 degrees angle of view, a normal lens would be about 2.5 times the diagonal of the sensor. For SEMTI 30 degrees, it's about 1.6 times the diagonal of the sensor. And for THX 40 degrees, it would be 1.2 times the diagonal of the sensor. The closer you sit and the bigger the screen, the smaller the focal length the normal lens needs to be. The further away you sit and therefore smaller the screen, the higher the focal length the normal lens needs to be. Here's a quick chart of some common sensor sizes and what a normal lens focal length would be under these three viewing angle standards. So ultimately, what a normal lens is, is entirely subjective. It's all relative to the viewing angle, which is a function of distance and the size of the final image. Now, am I suggesting that you lock your head down and view content only at highly specific distances? Of course not. In fact, I bristle at people who purposely seek out that 43.3 millimeter lens to meet the exact diagonal of a full frame sensor. Unless you're dealing with an industrial application where that precision is useful for automated systems, and that does exist, that kind of precision is immediately destroyed by the slightest change in viewing distance. Instead, look at a normal lens as sort of a definitional term to separate two concepts of wide angle and telephoto. And then don't get hung up on it. Just because an image isn't normal doesn't mean it can't affect you emotionally. I think that might be one of the greatest discoveries with the growth of photography and motion pictures, that we don't need the screen to be a true extension of normal experiences, that the human brain can accept and process images regardless of what angle of view they ultimately represent. Perhaps this is what I find so powerful about the art form, that photography, be it still or motion, is the interplay between the real and the abstract. The real in the sense that it captures a physical reality, but the abstract in the way that we can manipulate that reality through composition, exposure, lighting, movement, cutting, and even sound, all in the service to the emotion of the story whatever story we're trying to tell. Like, sub, ring that bell, comment, share, feed the insatiable YouTube algorithm. Throw a buck or two at my Patreon. Thanks to these fine folks for making these videos possible. Don't forget the merch store below where you can pick up some cool schnazzy apparel. So now that you know, don't get hung up on being normal. Go out there and make something great. I'm John Hess. I'll see you at filmmakeriq.com.